I have the policies and procedures for you. Again, my card, take it. I'll email it to you. You decide whether you like it or not. If not, get rid of it, create your own. That policy and procedure process took probably three to four months to create. Because no, we had to teach use of force tactics to firefighters. We have to teach them ground fighting. We have to take time on the range to familiarize them with all of our weapons. We have to talk to our communication center to determine what's the radio sign, call sign going to be. Our communication center was wound up because you're going to have a police car, guy in a car, and you're going to have, a, and they're going to have two different identifiers. How's this going to work? Like, don't worry about it. If he talks, he'll talk to the fire dispatcher. If he talks, he'll talk to the police dispatcher. We still, we had an overdose, not this week, last week. They call them 2525. 2525, we're out. Well, we'll let you, uh, clear 2525, we'll, we'll make you aware when the officer arrives on scene. He was driving. The officer was driving, the medic was in the passenger seat. We still working the dispatch thing out, you know? And he just, you know, he's here. We, he's 3-5 on the scene, that's, that's our code. Oh, okay, pay attention. Listen, we've been doing this for about 18 months now, but those things, we just, we continue to evolve, we continue to educate. So we got your team, you got them identified. When are you gonna work? How are you gonna work? Where are you gonna meet? All those things we've learned along the way to get this thing done. Got the policies and procedures. Then you have to let the folks get in there and work. Some guys are going to work. They're going to say, this is awesome. This is fantastic. They're fantastic. Some guys are going to say, oh, I believe in what you're doing, but I, I can't do that. That's OK. Thank you for being honest. Thanks for not screwing up the game. Go back to being great at your other job. And when it's, when you're, because we had a, our QRT worked yesterday. They weren't doing follow-up. They were just doing first emergency first stuff. We got some guys that just like to do that because they love you know, critical incident response, they want to be in the active shooting stuff, they want to be up-tempo, you know, operations. Those are fun things. That's okay. You'll, you'll delineate between your personnel on who's really good and who's not. Then you have, but you also have to consider the fact that who's willing to work with these guys? Because you're, you're partnering a police officer with a firefighter, which is sometimes oil and water. Are they going to get along? Are they going to be able to understand this? And then we're asking a third party to be involved. Can we all get along? We have to be considerate of who we are. Is your vehicle big enough? Is the vehicle big enough to handle that? You know, that's why it was an SUV. And you know what? That SUV is too small. Because on the medic side, you want, I call it a refrigerator in there. But I know it's not a refrigerator. It has some tactical, technical work for, to store stuff in a cool See, he just like, <laughs> it's a refrigerator in the back so you can put your medicine in. I get all that. Temperature controlled device. Yeah, it's like, the, it's like the training tank at the Highway Patrol Academy that's really a swimming pool. You know, that's okay. But the vehicle's too small already because you're hauling people around. You got multiple passengers. We didn't think about that. Is your vehicle big enough to handle all the things you need in it? Do you want to mark differently? How are you going to represent yourself? How are you going to let your community know what you're doing? We held a press conference. Then we invited everybody in the press conference out to Canvas. That was our first act as a QRT. We had news media canvassing with us. We all canvassed. But we had local reporters going door to door, just dropping those flyers off. And they were all like, this was really cool. They did great stories. We let people know. And we started to work. When we started initially, we did a look back. Don't, would you say don't waste your time on doing a look back? Because we went back and we really had no success. Yeah, the only thing I considered doing was doing some kind of mailing, but we really did not have success with people that were back more than a couple weeks, quite frankly. Yeah, we thought, well, let's go back like two weeks to a month and we'll just pull all those over. It just, we were too far away. We were too far past the overdose, past the near-death experience for them to realize that I need help. So we kind of wasted the first couple of weeks trying to find our way. And then we said, okay, let's just deal with what we have in front of us and attack it that way. And that's when we really started having 
the successes, and we really started getting in. So really, we started July 15th. Really, we started doing the job that we're doing now, August 1st of 15, and we started rolling this thing through. So I mean, these things are, question? Yes, sir. I just want to make sure I understand. The, uh, the Thames Medic and the SWAT cops portion of what you're describing is the QRT. Is there any piece of that that has been necessary to do the follow-ups, or is that just like you're just putting two teams together in the same group? Well, I, good question, because we talked about that. We don't, we don't anticipate, we're not necessarily looking at putting sweat or, or Thames and SWAT guys together to go out and do this. We just want to go do the follow-up. You don't have to. Maybe. You don't have to. What you, if you remember from my initial, the follow-up is one-fifth of the services provided by the QRT. Again, they're providing first emergency first response, critical incident response, active shooter response, those kind of things, so we can get that medic into the warm zone quicker. That's where the tactical medic comes to provide. If you're just doing the heroin follow-up, you don't need to train to the level of the tactical medic. The SWAT guys were just guys that said, I want to be involved with an up-tempo, high-speed, low-drag operation. So it was the guys that say, you know what, I like to work a little bit harder. I want to try and push the, I want to be involved in something other than just fill in the blank. So, so showing up at the OG's house and no. fight. No, we do outfit all the guys that are on the, we, the medics are all wearing ballistic vests. You know, they have the gear. They wear an exterior pack. It's medic on both sides, so they're easily recognizable. They carry the radio and all their gear so they can pop out of the car and do the business that they need to do. But they wear the same vest the police officers do. And then they have their tactical medic gear in the back in the event there comes out another emergency. So that's a good question. We wanted to talk about that. Thank you, Chief, for asking that because you don't have to provide the follow-up for the heroin with tactical medics. It's just how we built our team to do other things besides that. So um, please, the takeaway is when you guys do this and you have success, please remember to share because we were graciously called, and, and Chief said it, we were called experts, we're not. We were just willing to try something. And with good people, we had some great success. So every community that's doing this, we just ask you kind of give it back. So if you found it, you know what, Chief, we like this, but we, this really works for us. One of the questions in some of the smaller communities was, have you thought about including the faith-based piece? Now, we have faith-based people on our community health collaborative. They sit at the table with us. But we have 40 churches in our community. That's something that we really, we don't want to, we're just not ready to do that yet. They sit at the table with us, but we don't want to put them in the car. Some of the smaller communities that have talked about this, where you have one or two churches, you're a really tight-knit community, everybody knows each other, and they have churches have really wanted to get on board with it, they're more involved in the quick response team follow-up because everybody, it fits better in a smaller community. So 60,000 people, 45 square miles, it doesn't work the same for us. We don't want to offend anybody. You know, we could assist them down the road, but right now, we don't want them showing up at the front door. and just, We just don't want to make it an issue. Um, again, the focus on this whole thing is making people realize that there's someone in the community that cares. And police and fire obviously are recognizable figures of respect within every community. And then we bring in the experts, let them do their magic, get them to the resources to provide treatment and a step towards recovery and then work with those families to let them know that you're not alone. You're not alone. And then, again, what we're working on right now is the creation of an education piece where we bring back everybody that we've served, families as well as those folks that are in treatment, in recovery, in maintenance, and talking these things through. You had response from the QRT. Please tell us, was it, what did it mean to you? Are we, are we good? Did it work? Did, what did we do well? What did we need to do better? What shouldn't we do? All those kinds of things. And letting them know that look to their left and look to their right, there's other people just like them. So, you know, why do we have a, a facility in the mall? Because we don't, someone sees you at the mall, they're like, well, I saw you at the mall. Well, of course, it's the mall. 
everybody goes to the mall. We want to take some of that stigma away from going in and getting the help that Nan and Shauna's teams provide through the support work, networks, and things of that nature. So fighting the stigma, educating our communities, and then providing that resource to them is huge. So before we, is there any questions that, that we can answer before we leave and head back south? We hope we didn't waste your time. We certainly hope that, uh, you know, this afternoon was worthy and we appreciate it. And we, you know, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's just deciding to do something. So.